Okay, so first of all, I want to plot the correlations of all of these areas against each other. So I'll start by copying the headings and pasting them down here. And then I will also paste the headings transposed down the side. Then I will take the rows and I'll increase the row height. And I want each of the cells in this table to be about a square. And I'm going to plot little scatter plots inside each of these cells, with the bottom of the cell being the x-axis and the side of the cell being the y-axis. But first I need to calculate the actual correlation numbers. So I don't want industry versus industry because that's obviously not a real correlation. So I'll start with industry versus power plants and use the correlation formula. The first array is going to be whatever heading is to the side of the cell. So that is power plants in my case and I'll select the whole of the column and then press F4 to insert the dollar signs around that array to make it an absolute reference. For the second array I want whatever area is in the heading above the cell, so industry in my case, and I'll select the industry column and this time I'll press F4 twice to get the dollar signs just in front of the row number but not the column letter and close brackets and enter. I'll just quickly format this and change it to two decimal places, then I'll copy it downwards. Now I want the correlation between industry and solvents, so I will change the selection up here and change the power plants to solvents and enter. Then I'll drag it down once more and this time I want industry versus agriculture. And so I again need to move this selection one column to the side. Another way of doing this is to change the letters in the formula. Now I'm going to do this for all of the other correlations in this first column and I will fast forward through this. Now once I have all the correlation numbers set up, I'm going to add in the little mini scatter plots. I'm going to select all of the data here except for the first column. Then go to insert and spark lines and select the line option. Then the data range is the range I just selected and the location range is going to be the first column in my table except for the first cell. And OK. And now you can see we have lots of mini charts. Now there's some changes that need to be made to these. At the moment there's no x-axis in any of these charts. It's just plotting the data in the order that it finds it. So I need to add in the x-axis data. Unfortunately for spark lines, the only option for the horizontal axes is to have a date. So we're going to have to pretend that our data are dates and just select this range and OK. And now you can see the charts have updated themselves, so the value in the x-axis at the bottom of each of these cells is the same for everything in this column, it's the industry area. Then for the y-axis along the side of each of these cells, the data is whatever is in the heading in the same row as it. Now I'm going to change the way these look slightly, adding in markers and changing them to blue and then I don't want the actual lines in here so I'll change those to white. And this now looks a bit more like a scatter plot. I'm going to make an actual scatter plot 
for industry and power plants by selecting them and then pressing Alt F1 to make a scatter chart. And if I bring this down here, we can compare this here to this first cell. So we have two dots at the top and then a three in a line here, then three in a line down the middle and a clump here and then a clump down here as well. So we can see that they look very similar. And we can also check to see that the actual number matches up with the scatter of the data. So 0 0.96 is a very good correlation. And we can see that in the scatter of the data, it looks like it has a very good correlation. On the other hand, forest burning, for example, has almost no correlation. 0 0.06 is very close to no correlation. And we can see that in the scatter of the data. There doesn't really seem to be any pattern in it. Now we have the first column set up correctly. I'm going to copy the whole of this column and paste it one column to the side. Now there's some updates that need to be made to this. So go to design and edit data. First of all, I don't want the power plants versus power plants correlation because that's not a real correlation. So I'm going to change my range to instead of starting in row 34, starting in row 35 instead by changing this number here to 35. Then for the data range, we can see that it has moved to the side when we copied the formula to the side. We are starting in the solvents column now, which is what we want. However, we have this extra blank column here, which we don't want. So I'm going to change the column letter from M to L in here in order to fix that and OK. We can also check to make sure that the X axis has updated correctly. And we can see the X axis is now the power plants column. So that updated correctly when we copied and pasted the formula across, it went to the side and OK. Now, I don't want this number here because that's power plants versus power plants. But if we check this correlation formula here, we have power plants versus solvents. And if we go back up to the top here, we have power plants versus solvents. So this is also updated correctly. The solvents column, the array is an absolute reference. So this hasn't changed. But for the power plants column, this array doesn't have dollar signs in front of the column letters. So it moves to the side when we copy the formula to the side. So the industry column has become the power plants column. So all the formulas have updated correctly. Now we will copy this range to the side. And now we see we have a problem. It looks like the data is being plotted in two lines here. An issue with using spark lines is that the data on the X axis has to be dates. And in Excel, all dates have to be whole numbers. That's just the way it works. So for whatever data we select, it rounds them all to whole numbers. This isn't really noticeable for industry and power plants because they are such large numbers. But for solvents, the numbers are a lot smaller. They vary between 0 and 2. So we end up with everything being rounded and we get two lines worth of data here. Now I'm going to select solvents and agriculture. And press Alt F1 to make a scatter chart out of this then right click and copy and then paste as a picture. Now the chart is a picture. It's not linked to the values in the data anymore. And I'm going to alter the solvents data. The only way I know of fixing this problem is to just make all the numbers much bigger. So I'm going to times all of these numbers by 100. And you can see this chart here updated itself, but the one that is a picture hasn't changed at all. I'm just going to delete that 
and then double click on this to update all of the numbers in this column. If I drag this back down now, we can see the solvents column has fixed itself. These values still need updating, so I'll select all of them and go to Design and Edit Data. I don't want the solvents versus solvents correlation, so instead of starting in row 35, I'll change it to starting in row 36 instead, and I'll change that here. Then for the data range, this has moved to the side again, so it's starting in the agriculture column now, which is what we want, but I have this new blank column down the side, which I don't want, so I'll change the M column to L just here, and OK. We can also check to make sure that the date axis has updated itself again, so it's now in the solvents range. And I don't want the solvents versus solvents correlation, so I'll just delete that. But we can check this formula here, it should be solvents versus agriculture. And if we scroll back up, we can see that that is correct. So the formula has updated itself correctly as well. Now I have this chart here, which I made before I edited the data. So I can compare it now to the values in this cell and check they look correct. So we have these two dots here at the top in both of them, these four dots here, which is also here, then a clump of data points in the middle, and then they both decrease to about the zero, zero mark. So we can see that these look very similar, even though, of course, we are now not plotting the real numbers. The numbers are much, much larger than they were before. But I don't think this really matters because you can't see the numbers in the spark lines anyway. It's just something to bear in mind. Anything on your x axis is going to be rounded to a whole number. Now that I have this column set up, I am going to copy it to the side again, then go to Design and Edit Data, change the row number by increasing it by one, then change the data range to remove this blank column at the side, and OK, and then delete this correlation number here. Now I'm going to do that for every single other column in this correlation matrix and then we can have a look at the completed matrix at the end. And now I have the completed correlation matrix. I will zoom out so we can look at the whole thing. And we'll do some formatting on this. So I'll move the headings to the bottom and then add borders to everything. And this is the formatted correlation matrix. So there are obviously some limitations to using spark lines in this way, but I think this is a good compromise between having a correlation table and plotting all of the graphs individually. With a correlation table, you can see the numbers, so the 0 0.96 or whatever it is, but you can't see the scatter of the data that goes into making up these numbers. Whereas with the spark lines, you can see what the actual data looks like. You obviously don't get as much detail as you would if you plotted the actual graphs, but if you did plot the graphs, it would be more time consuming because you'd have to do it one at a time, and it would also probably take up more space and be more fiddly to arrange in a grid formation like this. And I think this is a good way of visually representing a lot of data. So in this video, I have shown you how to make a correlation matrix in Excel using spark lines, and that is everything.